We've learned today Paula Broadwell will not be charged with cyber-stalking over the emails she sent to Jill Kelly, but General David Petraeus's former mistress is still being investigated for some classified documents found on her computer. And today, the post Rajiv Chakrasakran has new information on another unusual and possibly improper relationship between Petraeus and two civilians. On August 8, 2011, the Institute for the Study of War, a think tank in Washington, was uh, founded by a woman named Kimberly Kagan, uh, hosted a dinner for General David Petraeus, who had just uh, returned back to the United States about a month earlier after relinquishing command in Afghanistan. Her husband, Fred, works at the American Enterprise Institute, a conservative think tank in Washington, D.C., where he focuses on national security issues as well. You know, what the Kagans do, actually, is they grade my work on a daily basis. And it, no, I'm, you think I'm joking. Both of them went out uh, together to work for General Petraeus for uh, almost 10 months while he was in charge in Afghanistan. The fact that I've had the privilege to watch General Petraeus at work day in and day out has been an extraordinary and special occasion. So usually these think tank experts show up for visits anywhere from one to two weeks. They travel around the battlefield, uh, they have some meetings with high-level commanders, and then they come back to Washington, they, they write reports, they write op-eds in newspapers, they testify in Congress. What the Kagans did was very different. It has been amazing to watch him go into a morning meeting uh, and take briefings, both smart and silly, uh, with a great degree of sophisticated criticism and a great degree of humor. They wound up essentially working as de facto staff officers for General Petraeus. They had desks in his headquarters. They had the highest level security clearances that allowed them to read sensitive intelligence reports and, and communications intercepts. They had lots of one-on-one -on -one FaceTime with General Petraeus. They were able to travel around Afghanistan using VIP travel privileges to go and uh, get a sense of how the war was playing out. So they did a lot of very valuable work, according to people who are close to Petraeus. And uh, each day, then I go back and I watch the secure internet, uh, and here comes the email from the Kagans. And it's always very alarmed, it's always very concerned, <laughs> and I've always screwed something up and I've been wrong. But <laughs> seldom do I admit that. But the next morning, they will hear me <laughs> echo what, of course, they suggested. And, there is some suspicion that actually there's a hand up my back that makes my lips talk and it's operated by one of the doctors, Kagans. For all of that, all of that work they did, sometimes working 18 hour days, seven days a week, weeks on end, how much do they receive from the federal government? Nothing. And that's what's so extraordinary about this. They served as war zone volunteers. The Kagans called themselves great patriots. And of course, it is remarkable that you'd have two people who would literally go and spend months on end in a war zone, literally asking for no financial compensation in return. But some military officers who worked in that headquarters were very troubled by this because the Kagans didn't really exist in the chain of command, which meant that they could go directly to Petraeus. They didn't have to work through other layers of subordinate staff officers. There were no restrictions on them speaking their mind if they, if they ever wanted to. Military spokesmen told me that Defense Department travel regulations do permit civilian volunteers to go out to the war zone to help advise commanders. But the spokesman also noted that lawyers are examining the specific arrangement between Petraeus and the Kagans to ensure that it fully complied with those regulations. While they weren't being paid by the federal government, they did continue to receive their salaries from their respective think tanks. The ability to have a 15-month deployment, essentially, uh, in the service of those who, who needed some help, uh, and the ability to go at a moment's notice, that's something that you all have sponsored um, through your generosity to ISW. She was getting a paycheck from the Institute for the Study of War. That paycheck was in part uh, funded by the Institute's donors. Some of those donors who were in attendance at that dinner uh, included defense contractors and, and others with potential business interests in Afghanistan. Thanks to all of you for, for supporting an organization that I think General Keene very accurately described as filling a niche. The extraordinary access that the Kagans had to Petraeus, to the headquarters in Kabul, coming on the heels of the disclosures of what we now know about the relationship that Paula Broadwell, Petraeus' biographer turned lover, 
also had in Kabul, really raises new questions about Petraeus's management of the war. But let me just say thanks to you formally for your tremendous leadership, and um, thank you. That's our show for tonight. We'll fold things up. Hope to see you back here tomorrow.